Hi, Jeff Spire again. Last week I talked to you about flat bottom boats and today I'm going to talk to you about V bottom boats. Uh, there's a few of them that I've designed. I, I, des I design and uh, uh, have kind of, I don't know, a little bit more specialized use of uh, V bottom boats. Um, the main advantage, of course, over flat bottom boats is improved dynamic stability. That means when you're running in the boat, um, if the water changes, uh, you know, waves that you're going over, chop or whatever, um, that you're going over changes quickly, the boat tends to be uh, more stable as the change occurs. So you don't get any as much jarring motion as much as you do smoother motion because the the boat drafts more it's uh it's deeper under the water so um so to move it up and down an inch um takes less force flat bottom boat doesn't draft as much so to move it up a little bit uh it, it displaces more so it, it moves quicker so uh V-bottom boat doesn't move as quickly that way. You all know what a V-bottom boat is. You see them all the time, and that's pretty standard. And um, if you were out to go buy a, uh, let's say, a, you know, a, a offshore fisherman type boat, it would, it would, chances are pretty good it would be a V-bottom boat. So, V-bottom boats in general are uh, the ones I design anyway are classified in really three ways. And one of them is kind of split the difference between the other two. Um, the first one uh, is are what's called displacement hulls. Now, a displacement hull is a boat that basically has a canoe-shaped waterline. Now, sometimes these have transoms, and sometimes they have rounded sterns and other th features. But if you were to actually look at, um, well, like the sailboat here, if you were actually to look at the waterline, it would be canoe-shaped. It would be pointed at both ends and uh, and get wider in the, in the middle. And so it would be, uh, you know, like a football shape, let's say. Um, now, planing, I'm sorry, uh, displacement hulls are characterized by what's called a hull speed. And a hull speed is strictly the function of the length of the boat. So if you were to have a boat that's longer um, in the same width, it would go faster uh, under under planing conditions than a than a shorter, fatter boat. Um, seems funny, but you know, back in the old days, they used to make when when all they had were displacement hulls. They used to make these uh, little water taxi commuter boats that had like let's say five horsepower motors on them. And they were pretty fast, but they were like 60 feet long and three feet wide. So they were like a big, long canoe. Um, and uh, this is this is why, for instance, a catamaran is uh, is faster because it's got uh, it's got long, narrow, longer, narrower hulls uh, than a, than a traditional sailboat. And so it tends to be able to go faster than a, than a uh, standard monohull. So now for a 20 foot, 24 foot boat, the planing, the hull speed, if, if you run the calculation, it's right on Wikipedia. You can, you can look it up, hull speed and download it and, and use it to calculate the speeds of various boats. Um, means that anyway, in a 24 foot boat, for instance, it's not very much. It's only uh, uh, five and a half knots, something like that, six knots. Um, so that's not very fast. <laughs> that's, uh, that's actually pretty slow. So this is why trawler hulls, for instance, you know, they don't go very fast. Uh, a, a typical trawler will only go, you know, six to eight knots. Uh, you know, my commercial, uh, fishing boat that I, that I first ran, uh, was a 36 footer. I ran it out of Morro Bay and it, uh, it would, um, it had a, a 55 horse, um, uh, three, a 371 GMC, uh, engine in it. And, um, you know, it would, uh, cruise at 
you know, seven knots and top out at eight knots. That was it. That was all, that was all it would go. So that was, uh, and that's pretty typical of Western, uh, you know, offshore trawlers, for instance. Uh, they, they just are offshore fishing boats. They just don't go very fast. Um, and that has to do with the hull speed. So if you're looking at a at a, a, a hull of smaller hull speed type boat, which would be like a kayak or a um, you know a, a, a boat kind of like along those lines, something that uh, the stern is out of the water or it has this teardrop sort of shape, um, you, you, be, because there's a there's a two uh, well I'll explain that in a minute. Um, it won't go very fast. So, so if you're using low power on it, which would be like oars or paddles or an electric trolling motor, you know, you're, you're, um, you're hoping that it's going to be, the longer it is, the faster it'll go. So, um, what happens is there's a, there's a bow wave that's generated and then there's a stern wave that's generated. And if you go a little bit faster than the hull speed, the stern wave separates. So there's actually, the, the hull squats, the, the aft end of the hull just lowers down and it's like you're going uphill. So um, you can put more and more and more power and you just make that hill deeper and deeper <laughs> and uh, you just don't, you just don't move up with fast enough. So that's what happens with, when you have a, uh, you know, pointed water line in the aft section of the boat. So, um, Next, if you were to take that hull in the aft section and flatten it out so it didn't come up as high and made it wider, the wider you make it, um, the more the boat is able to plane. So it, it will, and then jump up on a plane and it will skim over the top of the water. This happens with, uh, um, this is what's called a planing hull. So if the hull uh, is, uh, has a, has a, a bit of a wider transom and, and uh, is flattish in the in the stern section. Doesn't have as much rocker. Um, the hull will plane, so so you you can kick it over that that hull speed easily easily enough, and and it doesn't require lots of extra power to go much faster because it it uh, rides up out of the water and kind of skims along the surface. So, um, I also I also create what I call semi planing hulls or semi displacement hulls, and these are boats that will displace with low power, but once you add more power to them, they will they will they will actually start start planing. So they'll actually come out of the water and they will um, they'll be a lot more uh, useful in the mid range speeds. So. Where a, a displacement hull is going to go, you know, five knots, seven knots, eight knots, um, a uh, a planing hull is going to go 20 knots or up, you know, 20, 30, 40 knots. Um, a semi-displacement hull will will be able to consume fairly low power at the lower speeds, the eight or eight or nine knots, but once you once you kick it up into uh, um, into the moderate speeds in the teens, let's say, um, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to get some planing type action out of it, and it'll be more much more useful for cruising. Let's say you're you're um, well. Uh, let's say to take this twenty seven footer. If you uh, if you put like a like a fifty horse diesel in it, you put a, a, a four one oh eight. Uh, uh, diesel in it, you know, uh, what, I'm trying to remember the name. <laughs> anyway, one of the common small lightweight diesels, you know, around 50 horsepower. Um, it will, uh, it will, at lower powers, it'll, it'll cruise along at eight or nine knots, you know, just fine. But then when you uh, pour the coals to it, you know, you'll be able to cruise in the teens, like 16, 17, 18 uh, miles an hour, something like that. And it'll uh, it will uh, um, still burn only two two gallons an hour or something like that. So 
it makes a useful cruising boat that uh, that way along those lines. So um, it's it it becomes a very useful hull for those mid-range speeds. And I, and I have a few boats like that, a few boats that will that will actually plane, you know, the the uh, and um, and you know use at moderate speeds, and they'll also display so you can. Uh, you know, you, you select the range that you that you'd be willing to go with it. So, anyway, um, a lot of people ask me, "What's the dead rise of your boats?" And the, there, there's, there's, you know, several ways that people calculate that, and different things that go on and uh, along those lines. And and a lot of people are used to these modern sort of factory built fiberglass boats where they're they're straight on the sides and they're, you know, deep V on the bottom and they're just consistent all, all aft, uh, which does not make a good wooden boat, by the way. And, I, and I'll get into some more details about that in the, in the future. But, you know, so the shallow uh, V boats are ones that uh, I design. They're, they're really um, used for like bass boats or dive boats where they, they uh, they tend to be a, a suitable for moderate water and uh, and pretty good tracking and uh, um, anyway they're they're um, they're they're like five degree six eight degree um, sort of uh, dead rise angles and uh, very useful for certain certain types of boats um, and then I have deep V boats and these are typically the uh, the pangas, uh, the pangas are all deep V boats, and that those have a, a deeper V, and they tend to be very good running at higher speeds out in choppy or, or ocean water, um, and they they tend to they tend to have a lot of uh, reserve stability, a lot of uh, at moving when they're moving, when they're stopped, they're not they're not nearly as uh, as you know, statically stable, but, but dynamically they, they will work pretty well. But most of my boats are, are what I would call variable V and they're, uh, the dead rise changes throughout the hull section. So they start out at a fairly steep dead rise they're, they're up in the bow there. The dead rise is, is like a deep V and then but back in the stern it's like a it's like a shallow v or or some of them even flat and i'll get i'll get into those too uh, when i start talking about the specific designs i have but a variable v works to me the best because you can make it plain and you can make it uh, uh displace and you can make it uh semi displace or semi plain so you can do all things with them and they they tend to be you know, easier to build. They tend to be easier to build out of plywood, and they tend to be very useful for uh, for home builders, in in my opinion. Now, again, I don't build boats that are intended for you know high speed use. No racing boats or or uh, you know offshore contender kind of uh, you know high speed sort of tournament fishing boats or anything like that. My boats tend to be you know, useful for the home builder and uh, useful for for most conditions that they run in, but not not push the limits in any way. Um, so uh, I, I tend to tend to design a lot of uh, variable V boats, um, and I'll describe those as I get into my specific designs and and uh, and and discuss how they actually work. Um, now to start, I have um, what I call V-bottom dories. Now, every time I post something that says V-bottom dories, I'll get a bunch of know-it-alls on the computer that are on the on the Facebook or wherever you know on uh, social media or wherever that'll post. No dories are definitely uh, all flat bottom. You don't know what you're talking about. So. Okay, but uh, uh, you know I'll give you some examples. The Newport Beach dory. Uh, Fishermen uh, have been have been there since the 19 uh, I don't know since prior to the 1920s has probably been there a hundred years in Newport Beach, and I've got pictures going back all kinds of years, and uh, um, you can see back in the in right after World War II in the 40s and 50s, 
that some of those boats started to have V's on them. Uh, and these are dories. These are land on the beach dories that, that orig originally started out um, in the uh, in the in the you know the teens and the twenties as all flat bottom boats, and now have have uh, migrated to being V bottom. So I didn't invent the the idea of a V bottom dory. It's been around a while, and I took my basic idea of a um, Carolina dory, which is has a uh, what I would call sharp entry. It's got a, a very pointy bow. Let's put it that way, and um, and started putting a V on it, a variable V, and uh, and created my line of, uh, of V bottom. And I used to call them V bottom Carolina dories. Now I just call them V bottom dories. And um, and they tend to be very popular. They're they're used all over the world. I think the first one I knew was was in use was in New Zealand and uh you know it was uh it was the guy loved it and it became a pretty famous boat and uh and there I've got them everywhere now they're all over uh southern california the, the east southeast uh the carolinas people love them uh up in uh nova scotia there's there's a real famous one that's in uh that's in prince edward island uh up in the canadian maritimes um, and there's some of them uh, in, uh, uh, you know, Great Britain area, some of them in Africa. They're, they're around a lot. Uh, very, very popular boat. It, it's, a, it's a good lightweight boat. Guys use them in Hawaii for uh, running offshore um, because they run per, with pretty low power. You know, 40 horsepower in a 19-footer is enough to get you up on a plane, a nice plane. I, I tend to... I used to say 40 and people said, that's probably not enough. So, um, so now I say I, I, my recommended, I think is a 70, 65 or 70 horsepower on it. And it's, uh, it makes for a good, uh, you know, offshore fishing boat. Uh, it'll run in a pretty good chop without bouncing you around much. And, um, yeah, it tends to be a really a good sturdy boat. So. These come in sizes from, I've got them as low as 15, I believe. I've got a wide 15 footer that's, that's very popular. And then I've got, they come up to, uh, I've got uh, several in 24 foot range. One of them, um, that runs off of Sweden, uh, with a moderate size motor. I think it has a 20 horsepower and it'll go, it cruises at eight and tops off about 12 knots. So it's, it's use, very useful uh, and, uh, in the North Sea there and, and the areas around uh, that tend to get pretty rough weather. Um, again, the builders love them. So um, the second uh, type of boat I carry a lot of and, and uh, it seems to be very popular is the Panga. Now, again, a lot of people write on there, you don't know what you're talking about. Pangas were used by commercial fishermen for many years and da 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 but the real, the, but really, pangas were, were uh, developed by the Yamaha uh, boat company, Yamaha Motor Company, um, in the in the early seventies, and it was done through a grant from the uh, uh, from the uh, <laughs> World Bank, I think, uh, that uh, they developed a commercial fishing boat that was inexpensive, would run off seventy five horsepower about 20 feet long, 21 feet, I think it was. And uh, it was kind of based on this earlier wooden design that was kind of popular um, in the Sea of Cortez down in Mexico. And um, and it was, uh, that was kind of the the basis for all of them. And mine are more like that that traditional uh, wooden design that uh, that used to be built in the 60s down in Mexico. And mine, mine kind of duplicate that action of those those pangas there. So, you know, I, I've had a lot of people post on on videos that I just named it that because I wanted to sell more because you know they, it was a popular name or something, you know. But <laughs> but that's <laughs> kind of silly. I did I did actually design it around the around the the Yamaha version of the panga in in, in the wood form format. And uh, so they look a lot like the older wooden ones. So, 
And these are a deep V hull, um, and they'll run. They, they take more power than a than a, a variable V um, V bottom uh, dory. Um, so they take a little bit more power. So you got to push them a little harder. Uh, but they do tend to be good, um, faster offshore boats, and they'll take a lot of pounding. Very popular in Southern California. Guys run out to the the tuna grounds. Uh, you know. 60, 80 miles offshore with them. Um, and they, um, you know, they're popular in a lot of places where guys want to run, you know, offshore with them. And uh, good boat, good solid boat, um, good and sturdy and uh, and useful offshore. I, 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 it's not one that I would use a lot unless you're in the Great Lakes or somewhere where it, uh, where you get big water. That's not really something I'd, uh, I'd recommend for river or lake travel in most cases but um but but for the open bays and uh where you've got deeper water uh it's much better you know the the water in in the gulf uh gulf of mexico or or the you know eastern um east coast uh, uh bays tends to be shallower so it's it's not somewhere where you'd want to use a deep v boat because they 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 draft more I mean, it wouldn't be very useful around Port Aransas, Texas, for instance, because, you know, you've got six inches of water in a lot of places that you want to go and fish. So, um, but, but if you're going to stick, uh, offshore, like in California, you know, I consider 60 feet to be, I mean, that's, that's inside the, the LA Harbor, you know, it's 60 feet deep and then it gets deeper from there. So, I mean, go to, go into Catalina, it's 2,300 fathoms. So what is that? over you know six thousand feet something like that um and it's got major shipping lanes going through there so anyway uh pangas are are uh you know a good choice uh and uh and i've got them like i said from uh well, i've got some 12 footers uh which is pretty small for a panga but uh up to uh up to i think 26 26 is the latest so and there's been one of those built, and it's it's a good, very good looking boat. Um, the real popular ones are 21 and 23 feet, or the are the uh, the real popular ones for most most uh, you know fishing for you know individuals and and guys with families and things like that that want to use them. So um, again, I also make these semi planing hulls, and they, there's a number of designs uh, that way. Including sand pans that uh, that are kind of based on the Hawaiian uh, versions of the Japanese sand pan, and uh, actually a sand pan, believe it or not, that was a Hawaiian sand pan, and, and from the old Gilligan's Island. So <laughs> that's that's one uh, one common uh, example of them. Um, I also make them in a in, in a couple of different variants. You know, one of them is. Uh, Dead Rises that uh, popular in the Chesapeake Bay. And the other one is another sort of boat that I call the Cane River and the Zyder Z that, that are um, a little bit different shape and a little bit different, uh, uh, you know, design and, and look to them. And they tend to be more uh, in the cruiser range. So they'd be useful for doing the, the loop, for instance, or, you know, the, the Great American Loop. Or other other things where you needed uh, economy and moderate speed and and some room to walk around in. Um, anyway, uh, semi displacement hulls I've got uh, quite a few of them and they're like I said very very useful, very good for uh, for cruising. So I also have mullet skill hulls. Now this is based on an old design that they used for mullet fishing in uh, in uh, Florida back in back a um, hundred years ago or so, and they tended to um, they they needed uh, uh, a V bottom, but only up forward and not uh, not necessarily in the in the stern. So they transitioned from being a, a, a V bottom hull in the in the bow section to being a flat bottom hull in the aft section. And these tend to be a little bit less planable than uh, the uh, semi-displacement hulls I was talking about. But you can get them up on a plane if you put enough power in them. 
and they used them for all kinds of things, including rum running back in the Prohibition days. So, but they'd put they put you know big heavy engines in them. And I don't think it, it's very useful these days because you burn too much fuel. So they're they're best uh, in the uh, you know the displacement speeds, which would be you know six eight knots to uh, up into the teens, the low teens. You know, fourteen fifteen knots would be about all you'd want to push them. Otherwise, they'd chew up too much fuel. So. Um, Anyway, uh, mullet skiff hulls tend to be, um, uh, I, it's a great design, I, I, It's a, and it's a good mid-range design as far as speed and as far as capabilities go. It'll, it'll deal with ocean water and it'll de deal with some flatter inshore water. Uh, and so, so they, they tend to be, um, for guys that like more old-fashioned looking boats, I guess, <laughs> so... Anyway, it's a good it's a it, it's a good hull to home build. So, I also have a series of shallow V boats, and these these kind of include, you know, bass and and, and what I call dive boats, uh, where they're uh, um, pretty stable, going slow, and then they'll, you know, they'll be able to get up and go pretty fast when you power them up enough. Um, so again, uh, when you're choosing uh, one of one of the hulls to build, uh, think in terms of um, choosing the water that you're going to be in. What what do you plan to use it for? Um, and uh, in in like in like I mentioned in the flat bottom boat um, section, is that uh, you know it's going to be much more useful to you to pick the kind of the kind of water you're planning to be in and the, what you plan to do with the hull before you pick the style of boat. I think a lot of guys pick the style because it looks good or they, they that's what they've always wanted is something that looked like that but but really what you should what you should do is spend some time thinking about how you're going to use the boat how much fuel you plan to burn um you know i i, I notice boats that uh for instance here in southern california if you know, a lot of people go to catalina catalina is 26 miles and, um, you know, I see a lot of these deep V hulls that, uh, you know, they got two 454 Chevys in there and, and, you know, blowers on them and everything else. And they're, you know, they're putting out a lot of horsepower and they, they throw the throttle to it and they get out to Catalina and, and, uh, you know, they're there in 45 minutes. Great. And then they turn around and run home and, you know, they only burned, I don't know, what, 60 gallons an hour or so. You spend a couple hours running around the island and, you know, you've gone through a thousand dollars worth of fuel. You know, fuel's five bucks a gallon here <laughs> for uh, marine fuel. So, uh, you know, and, and with a, with a uh, um, you know, a 20 foot uh, dis semi displacement V, I mean, I'm sorry, a, a semi planing type hull, you know, you, you and a, let's say a you know, 80 horsepower, 60, 80 horsepower motor on it. Um, you know, you're burning, you're burning five gallons an hour. So you just do the same, uh, the same six hours of running to Catalina and going fishing and all that. It takes you an hour and a half to get there instead of 45 minutes. And, um, and you end up burning, you know, 120 bucks worth of fuel instead of a thousand dollars worth of fuel. So there's a, there's a big, big difference, uh, you know, in what you plan to do with the boat, uh, based on what kind of um, hull and what kind of power you're going to need to, to uh, work with it. But anyway, that's my story with uh, V bottom boats, and I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, and it may have brought a little bit of light to uh, to some of the hulls that you're that you're thinking about. And uh, uh, anyway. So next time I'm going to talk about another aspect of boat building. I'm going to, again trying to keep these coming once a week. So uh, pay attention uh, to uh, subscribe and do all that stuff and uh, and ring the bell um, when you after you subscribe so you're notified when the next one comes out. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks again.